In this video we want to show another function that works with arrays and indeed this time we want to show kind of a function that operates in a somewhat general way across arrays and it'll use both an array and a function pointer so that the operations that it uses can be somewhat uh, abstracted. So we're going to call our function here operate on array and the first thing we're going to pass into this function is our array. Once again, we're going to restrict ourselves to arrays events. As before, we need an index coming in. I'm going to call my index just i. And then I need the function that I'm going to be operating with. And this function is going to be something that takes two integer values and returns an integer value. So it's of type int int rocket int. After combining all these things, we're going to get back an int. And as before, we need to think about our base case. So to help understand this, what I'd kind of like for this to do is to say that I want to take the first value in the array and combine it using this function with the result of calling the same function on everything else in the array. And so uh, this function will be able to add up the values in an array or multiply the values in an array uh, because those are nice commutative operators. We don't really have any problems with doing that. The base case here is actually going to be the situation where we get to the last element in the array. If you get to the last element in the array, I just want to return that element. So basically, if an array has one element in it, and you're asked to operate on that array, you're just going to get back that one element. So for the if here, if i is, let's say, if we're less than arr.length minus 1, else, something else. Okay, so this first one will be our recursive case and the second one is our base case. In the base case, we're just going to give back ARR sub i. And now this should really only happen when i is equal to ARR sub length minus one. Uh, if we got higher than that, this would go out of bounds, but this recursive function should not be able to go higher than that. What do we do in the other case? Well, we want to combine f operating on the current index, arr sub i, with what we get by recursively calling this operate on array for everything else. So the same array, a one greater index, and the same function. Close off that there. Now, for this, we might want to create a more interesting array. How about we do this? Val nums2 equals array sub 4, 5, 6. And if I wanted to add them all up, I could call operate on array. We're going to pass in nums2. The index we're going to start at is 0, and the function is summation. If we run that, we get the weird printout that we saw in the previous video, and then we get a sum of 21, which is the correct sum for those numbers. What if I wanted to take a product? Well, I just change that to do multiplication. And now we should get 6 factorial, which is 720. So this is a, a more interesting, more useful function. Once again, we have an array. We have an integer index that we pass in. And in this case, we're using recursion to move across it. And our base case is when we get to the extreme of the array. Uh, previously, we kind of went an, all the way up to the last element, and we kind of stopped when we went past the last element. Here we're actually going to stop on the last element 
and give back that value uh, so that we don't have to worry about a base case value. So that's another simple function that we can do with arrays. Turns out there are a number of methods on arrays that can do these types of things for us, but we want to understand how we could construct the logic on our own, and hopefully this helps you to see how you can use arrays.